evening and welcome to Meticulous Moments. My name is Yonita Kapp. You can reach me at meticulousmacarons at gmail.com or find me on LinkedIn. Since the COVID-19 pandemic hit the globe, I've had the wonderful privilege to meet a wide array of fantastic individuals. These individuals have truly touched my life in so many positive ways. Amongst this group of people, there are authors, public speakers, life coaches, poets, leaders and visionaries. They are the unsung heroes of our time. Therefore, I decided to start the Meticulous Moments movement out of a sense of my gratitude. It is my way of giving back to the community. Let us share and reshare their stories in an effort to build a better society. Today we have the privilege of spending time with the amazing and wonderful Nikki Cuesta. She writes, she was born on March 25, 1982 in Chicago, Illinois. She currently resides in Philadelphia. She associates in business and health information technology, launched Nikki's Lifestyle Club through Secret Direct, a lifestyle club that helps you look better feel better and experience the world. She's a licensed notary public and loan signing agent, NCPA notary, also the founder and CEO of Kickstart Notary, where she equips new and inspiring notaries with the tools and resources to enter the notary industry with confidence. She's the first time author of Building a Leadership Mindset, 13 Mindsets to Give Yourself, permission to succeed. She's creating my start as a motivational speaker. So she's creating her start as a motivational speaker, coach, podcaster and mentor, founder and CEO of Building a Leadership Mindset, Create Success. She's all about leaders, building leaders. And therefore you fit in so well with a portfolio of meticulous moments where we aim to facilitate community upliftment through leadership development. Welcome, Nikki Cuesta. Good day, everyone, and welcome on Meticulous Moments. Today we have the privilege of spending time with the beautiful Nikki Cuesta. Welcome, Nikki. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me, Juanita. It's it's amazing being able to connect with you and being able to share my story and motivate others. Absolutely, absolutely. It's a privilege to have you here and we are very excited about this session. Uh, would you please just introduce yourself to the audience? We would love to learn more about you. So yeah, absolutely. Again, my name is Nikki Cuesta. I'm originally from Chicago, Illinois, moved at age 20 to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania to come out here and move out with my mom. And it was just a decision that I decided to make as a leap of faith, just trying something new, going someplace new where no one knew my name and actually start my career, whatever that would be at that time. Wow. Amazing, amazing. Such a leap of faith that you took, you know, uh, going into the unknown, trying something new, reinventing yourself. That is a wonderful testimony. We are very, very proud of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. It, it wasn't easy, but definitely worth uh, every second and every minute for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. I would uh, encourage the audience, you know, that uh, we should, if we want to develop and grow, and that is what your life speaks to me about development and growth, you know, you motivate me. I would in encourage the audience to not always just do things that are easy, but to try things that are hard, because those are the things that develop us and shape us and mold us into the leaders that we become. Agreed. Totally rewarding when you just go above and beyond any struggle or any barrier and just fight through it and break through all those walls is just more gratifying for sure. I mean, I mean, when you reach that victory and you look back to the struggle, rewarding is the word that comes up that you mentioned. I love that. I love that. And this brings me to my next question. Uh, you are a personal development mentor at building a leadership mindset. 
Kindly elaborate on this for us and tell us more about your book, Building a Leadership Mindset. Yeah, so Building a Leadership Mindset was actually born during the most uneasy time of our life back in 2020, where I took a 15-year inventory of my life working in the healthcare field. And I love what I did, loved who I worked with and decided that now it was time for me to kind of explore my desire for entrepreneurship. And as a trainer, I motivated many people within the company, just interviewing them on onboarding and things like that. So I wanted to build out a YouTube channel that builds Mm -hmm. leaders and their mindset and kind of just change their trajectory of their life. So I never really did anything with it until this year that I just met some amazing individuals that said, Hey, it's time to write your book. And I'm like, Oh my God, let me take what I started and actually pour into it. So I started through my notary program, which is what I do Mm -hmm. full time as a business. And I started helping and equipping new and inspiring notaries. So now, you know, I'm creating a course, I've created a course, I'm in my fourth session now. And during that time, I decided to write my book. And it's a guide. It's 13 specific mindsets that will allow yourself to give yourself permission to succeed through my create success program. It's a 13 week course that mentors you kind of again, takes inventory of what your past experience are, what your gifts Mm -hmm. and your talents are your desires, put that all into a game plan and a blueprint that would make sure that it's definitely proven that it would create success for yourself and for your future, your family's future. So that's what I tend to do with this course and this book. It's definitely transformative when you have a mindset that you think you can't. And I'm a Mm can-do person, and I'll make sure to definitely allow you to Uh, get success in your life because we're all deserving of it. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. You are such an inspiration to us. And I agree with you that the mindset, the leadership starts here. It doesn't start anywhere else. And everybody, I always tell everybody, every single person has leadership abilities. It is up to you to go and delve into yourself, to do introspection, to see what are those leadership abilities. But more importantly, our leadership abilities are not just for us. They are for the greater good and for other people. And I really feel like your book, you know, speaks about how our leadership goes to others and how you uplift people. I love the fact that you want to lift people's lives, that you want to encourage them, um, you know, and, and enable them to live the best life. As you ended, you said that they deserve. If they only could, you know, realize that from the beginning. So, so in effect, you help them to realize their worth. Correct. Yes, that's absolutely the bottom line that wow. there is more to life than just existing. There wow. is, again, serving not only to yourself because you have to be 100% to give 100%. So yes. it, it, it's all about the mind, body, and soul and just how you put that all together and how yes. you surrender uh, mm-hmm. some of the things that you can't control. And we, we touch base on that. Uh, I touch base on celebrating, celebrating those around you, yourself, having grace. We talk about, you know, expectation. What Mm -hmm. does that look like um, for a leadership uh, mindset? So it's, it's very, it's very simple. And to the point, that's really how I teach, how I train and it's nuances that we tend to disregard in our journey that is really the biggest part of the reward and you know just the actual results so yeah I'm so excited about it love it there's two things that popped up in my mind when you were saying that you you bring the practicality of leadership to people and you, you, you bring a nuance to the things that we often, the basic things, like you said, that we often overlook. 
And those are the important things because we have to get back to those basics. I've been to wonderful conferences and huge shows and I've you know, rubbed shoulders with all types of leaders. But when you go and look at the preparation of something like that, we always go back to the basics. It doesn't matter how elaborate the theme is or the speakers are or on what scale it happens to use this as an example. We get back to those basic principles. So you are really, you are doing amazing things through your book. I can't wait to read it. I can't wait till the world reads it either. It's just going to be awesome. And I know even if I change one person's life, uh, it's going to definitely be gratifying, but I'm sure that it's going to reach many. And yeah. uh, I look forward to working with anyone and anybody that's ready to uh, stop making excuses and start acting on their journey. I love it. I love it. Going over into action is everything. That is how we get it done. And this brings me to my next question. How important is leadership in the home environment? And I ask this question because I always tell people that leadership starts at home. But I would love to hear your opinion on this. I would 100% totally agree. I grew up in a household that didn't really have the leadership mindset. It was just, you know, go to school, get a degree, work, pay your bills. Um, yeah. definitely don't be a follower for sure. Do what you want and how you want to do it. Um, but it was really never a conversation of you can be the president of the United States. You can do, and not wow. that it lacked that because there was a abundance of love in my home. It's just that I'm the first person or the first generation between me and my brother that actually graduated from college and, you know, did some licensing stuff and just, you know, became an entrepreneur, but it definitely starts at home. So what I did for, I have a son, he's 16. He's my biggest why uh, I'm doing this and everything else that I do. So I wanted to make sure that leadership was the base of conversation in my home for him. And as a 16 year old, uh, being a coder, uh, artist, an animator, um, and things of that choice and a game creator, I definitely empowered him to use his gifts and talents where he's mm -hmm. now a mini entrepreneur. He's, you know, selling his art in school. He made his own price um, yeah. list and just things like that. Just making sure that he develops his skills and, you know, nurtures mm -hmm. his talents and gifts. So leadership in my household is number one topic. I have affirmations all over my house, uh, refrigerator mirrors just things to remind us of why we have to live in our purpose so i think it's a hundred percent what is needed in each and every home and never never try to build out your child's future always give them that open space to develop mm -hmm. because you know what it's going to be more impactful for them than it yes. would be if we try to uh, drop our beliefs on them because then they can get rebellious. You know, they want to do their own yes. thing anyway. So when yes. you nurture it, um, it, it just comes out uh, more authentic. They're more creative, expressive. They're open up more. And, you know, socially, they'll definitely be able mm -hmm. to communicate mm -hmm. what their uh, dreams and desires are. So to have my son part of my actual business because I definitely hired him for the summer to do some things on the back end and delegate that. out also teaching him I mean he went through an interview process an application process an orientation wow. process so why not yeah. me build him instead of him going out into the real world and he's yeah. going to already be prepared he's going to be a step ahead of the yes. game and I definitely want him to, you know, he's in his senior year and I definitely want him to mm -hmm. go right into his craft. Why not? I mean, he can do college if he chooses to do so. He can mm -hmm. get a trade, a certification. I'm all about uh, knowledge, empowerment, education, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. really more go into your craft immediately. If I knew what I knew 
what I know now, I would have yeah. done this 20 years ago. So, <laughs> so yeah, so it's definitely, uh, definitely the number one topic in my household. I love that. I love that. And I was thinking as you were, you know, informing us and teaching us that really leadership at home, uh, we should, we should set up our children for success. And we do this by the sharing of knowledge and experience, but also through example. Now, what the, the, the process that you went through with your son, I think is amazing because you are setting him up for success. The moment he goes out into the world and he faces an interview or he has to fill in a form or there are certain requirements, he has the information he needs. He has the confidence because he's done this before. And that kind of puts him, puts him on, a, on a higher notch than the other applicants. So very clever of you to do that for him. I'm, I'm thinking of the phrase, setting him up for success. It's amazing. A mother's love and leadership, setting up her son for success. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you for Thank that. You. <laughs> so what are the key lessons that you've learned from leadership or leaders, leaders that you know in your life? What are the key takeaways? Oh, wow. There's so many. And I have so many coaches and mentors that have been in and out of my life for years, because again, I have definitely invested the time, the funds, the sweat, the blood, the tears, everything yeah. to develop my, my, what I want to give back. Right. Um, because you, you just learn from many people. So some main key things is never give up never give up on your dream oh, yeah. is number one. We come, we get these downloads and these ideas to start something new. And then we tend to tell people and then people tend to kind of think we're crazy. And then we just drop <laughs> the whole idea and we yeah. forget about it. And we don't yeah. realize that we're doing a disservice, not only to ourselves, but those people mm -hmm. that need your story, that need your information, yeah. that need your guidance in any way, shape or form. So obviously never quit. If you have an idea, put it down on paper. Yeah. Scripting is very important to manifest exactly what it is that you want to receive and also what you want to put out there in the world because yeah. it, it's giving it to the universe. It's now out there. It's your idea, your design. Never mm. worry about the how. Just mm. worry about the what. What is it that needs to happen? The how will come later as you start networking, communicating. Once you have that idea, you have to run with it because you never know how far it's going to go. And another thing that a mentor um, has expressed to me as well is that when you go for it, you have to go for it at a hundred percent. You can't just yes. say, you know, this is what I want to do and then kind of get you know, into the swing of things. And once you see price tags and um, you see other people doing it and thinking, okay, well, it's already out there. I'm not new. This is, you know, mm -hmm. nothing yeah. different. Who's going to want to, you know, invest in me when there's thousands of people doing it? No, that's not the case. There's billions and billions of people in this world and yeah. one person can't get to everyone. So there's a piece of the pie for yeah. everyone. Yeah. So those are just another, you know, key elements. And that, again, it's all about the mindset. It's all about, you know, you've tried something, you failed, and you just feel like you can't ever do it again. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Trial and error happens, and you have to be able to accept it. And again, surrender, okay, this is not for me, like I wanted to be a pharmacy yeah. tech. When I was in, you know, my 15 year healthcare career, I went through the course, I was this close to getting an exam. And wow. I just didn't see myself doing that. I said, I need to be in the field, boots on the ground, just talking to people, inspiring people, motivating them to, you know, find their inner selves and develop whatever it is that their heart desires. So just a lot of inspiration a lot of key moments it's too much to and we can have a whole separate uh, <laughs> podcast on that topic right yeah yeah <laughs> wonderful now it is absolutely a journey it's a journey and you know leaders i always tell leaders leaders are people that don't give up 
They don't give up on investing in themselves. They don't give up on searching for appropriate mentors and people that can help them in their personal and professional development. If one thing does not work, a leader goes and reinvents a the situation. They do research. They try something else. Leaders are adaptable. And I think it's wonderful that you've had many mentors over the course of your life. Because I think if you look back now, if we do all of us, we see how everything that they've taught us kind of weaves in together. And they all had a part in shaping, uh, like you speak about the mindset, shaping our leadership mindset to where we are today. Thank you for that fantastic answer. Thank you. <laughs> how do leaders bounce back after having a disappointment? How do they regroup? Wow, that, that's a, that can be a tough one for many when they don't have the proper tools to bounce back. But when you have faith and you know that, you know, maybe this is just a bump in the road, let me see and dissect what went wrong. What can I change? What can I update? What more expertise do I need? You have to just really think about it. Just, mm. you know, reevaluate the whole situation from A to Z. Get some people to look at what you're doing, not in the sense of giving their opinion, but giving solutions. Mm. And that would go back to yeah. mentors, uh, people yeah. that inspire you, your church, your, you know, networking groups, anyone that um, has that caliber of expertise that can say, hey, always go to the word as well yeah. um yeah. you know it's very you'll definitely find your answers and you know in your everyday spiritual life whatever it is that you do i don't want to you know push any religion on anyone but whatever yeah. faith uh, guy that you have definitely turn to that mm -hmm. as well. Uh, don't ever think it's your fault because mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of factors that things could happen when things yeah. go wrong and take accountability because if it was something that you lack to invest in, to mm -hmm. prepare yourself for, or anything like that, have grace, but definitely take yeah. accountability and try it again because you just never yeah. know. Absolutely true. Absolutely true. And, and we'll all agree that disappointments come through failure. And that failure is not a reflection on the leader as a person. It is a reflection on the method or the application that you took to problem solve because leaders are problem solve solver Correct. so it's not a reflection on the person i think sometimes they leaders uh, struggle to get over disappointments because they feel they are the failure and that is not true that is not true in any sense of leadership Agreed. you just have to tweak the way that you approached your task and we all keep on learning we'll never get to a place where we say well now we have achieved we will always learn other people will always shape us and we will teach others, you know, as we go along as well. So leaders, if you go through a failure, it is not a reflection on you as a person. You are not a failure. It is just that you need to tweak your application or the way that you approached your task. I agree. That's so true. I meant to that. I meant to that. So in your opinion, what defines a good leadership environment? Because leaders are part of teams. They work for corporations. What defines a good leadership, a healthy leadership environment, in your opinion? Oh, my goodness. We can go many ways with this as well. So, yeah, <laughs> it's very important to understand as an entrepreneur, you are in business for yourself, but you're not by yourself. You have many exactly. others that are going to contribute to the success in your journey as you're contributing to their success. So always know that to have uh, a healthy, trustworthy relationships, business mm -hmm. relationships, you definitely have to come 100% prepared, enthusiastic. It has mm -hmm. to be genuine. It has to be yeah. something that it is tangible, something that someone else could take back. So always look at what you're putting out there. So a, a great leadership team, again, communication, Good. Uh, it should have definitely um, a healthy environment. When I say healthy, I mean, everyone should have 
uh, the yeah. tools, necessities, everything that they need to accomplish their task, whether it be physical, whether it be yeah. um, relatable as far as, you know, material processes, yeah. procedures, policies, mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. needs to have boundaries, barriers, uh, not yeah. barriers, I'm sorry, boundaries and mm -hmm. a, a clear, concise, wow. Uh, consensus of consistency that everyone can feel comfortable that everyone is, you know, everyone's opinion matters, everyone mm -hmm. idea matters and taking everything into consideration to put mm -hmm. the final product together. So that's what I would say a uh, yeah. great uh, leadership environment mm -hmm. is no one is better than the other. They're all on the same yes. level, uh, no yeah. matter title um, and just being yeah. authentically you and accepting authenticity as well. Cause some people would see that as, you know, being rubbed off, you know, differently or mm -hmm. not. Well, someone that has confidence can come off mm -hmm. as conceited mm -hmm. and you never want to have those prejudgments, mm -hmm. uh, while you're in, you know, in a community of leaders, because we're all on the same mission. We're all out there to serve. Mm -hmm. We're all out there to increase our bottom dollar and just make, moves and serve the community so uh, a healthy yeah. environment definitely is important i love that i love that and and i was thinking of two things and the first thing that i was thinking was we don't compare because when we compare we compete and it, yeah. leadership is not a competition teamwork is about the whole team reaching that goal so that was the one point that you made, you reminded me of. And then the second point that you reminded me of was that corporations that excel and that have mentally healthy employees are corporations that make sure there is a psychological safe space for the employees where they can utter their concerns, their stresses, their fears, their anxieties. So I love the fact that you mentioned that there should be boundaries. Of course, there should always be rules. And of course, on the other hand, we have to say, if there is something that someone is going through in their personal capacity at home, they must have the, the trust in their corporation that they can bring it to the fore, that they won't be sent away or think of, you know, or looked um, negatively upon that is a healthy environment when people feel comfortable. And like you mentioned, when there is authenticity, because people yeah. don't want plastic, they want what is real. And sometimes what is yeah. real is not always sometimes anything pleasant. It can be a situation where people are in friction, but if they know that there are mediators and objective leaders that won't, uh, you know, look down upon their, their uh, shortcomings, I think that's a good and healthy environment. Thank you for opening that up for us. Absolutely. <laughs> Tell me, when do leaders need to do introspection? At which point in their leadership or, or, or you know, in, in their journey should they, in your opinion, do introspection? So introspection should definitely happen as often as possible because things are changing. Um, you're definitely developing, you're creating new collaborations. So you definitely never want to overwhelm yourself. You always want to have a steady, consistent uh, flow mm -hmm. in your business as a leader. And you want to make sure that you are um, not neglecting any area. So yeah. you definitely, you know, have, I would say, quarterly, every three months, kind of just yeah. reevaluate what's working, what's not working, kind of put a game plan together, have a team that can, you know, people outside seeing in people inside mm -hmm. seeing out what the, mm -hmm. um, what the conversation is, uh, because you want to make sure that you put the best of you out there, quality, yeah. um, yeah. quality, uh, connections are really what's uh, making a difference uh, right now. And we really have to understand that collaborations or network is our new net worth. Um, people are saying that right now. It's our new currency. Uh, we can't do things alone. So making sure that you know that 
you are not alone in this and it's time to reevaluate when things are hitting a road bump. Just pay attention to what's coming in and out, you know, and not so much uh, the dollars, but also the, um, the connections, the communications, the followings, just everything. I would say every three months should be uh, uh, just part of your, your Mm -hmm. um, yearly goals. I think that's wonderful. That's a wonderful suggestion. And I want to add that we can even take those uh, every three months introspection, you know, the activities that we do, and we can journal them. And we can see in a year's time, if we look back, okay, when I was doing this in March 2022, I wanted to change this. And by June, uh, you know, I had um, already dealt with that. And this is the new way that I approach things. Or this is how I overcome so and so. And that is really something to encourage us on our leadership journey. Keeping a leadership journal to say, well, this is the introspection. I did this. Uh, in, in these three months and the next three months, I kind of worked on this. I think that's wonderful. Uh, so let us do a leadership journal from now on, audience. Let us do introspection regularly because it is important. <laughs> definitely. Definitely take account Good. everything that's going on for sure. Yeah. How often do you engage with personal and professional development activities? Oh my God. Every, well, every week uh, I have about, I can say like between 10 and 20 calls uh, for Zoom, wow. not only in the way of me giving out um, my expertise, my knowledge on the things that I know through um, all of my courses and stuff like that, but uh, the different communities that I'm connected to. There's always developmental training. Uh, they're always, um, you know, I'm always plugging in as much as I can, as often as I can. Um, I do have a lifestyle club that I do have for national events a year in self development. It's um, in network marketing. It's a very wonderful program, which I also started in 2020. Uh, um, and it has skincare, nutrition, and travel, which has also geared me and prepared me for developing my course on mindset because it's all about mindset. It's all about, you know, the deals and, you know, what people are saying, what people are looking at um, and things like that. So um, the, it's just been amazing. Just I've invested over 20 grand in the last two years, just uh, in different programs and uh, different books. My library has increased. I would never ever be and I keep saying this uh Jose Escobar has a array of books he's like almost in the 2000s if he has it already surpassed that um but yes my library has definitely increased so I'm definitely I'm right now I'm reading um how to be a badass at making money with Jen Sincero I'm reading think and grow rich uh Uh, what's that? Uh, there's quite a few seller be sold. Um, and also just you're freezing a little bit there. Are you still there? Can you hear me? There I can. can. You hear me? I'll just oh. that part. I can hear you now. You were telling okay. me about the books that you were reading. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, I'm reading. I definitely encourage people to increase their library when it comes to uh, professional development. Invest in yourself. You're the only one that can. Um, that can gain exactly what you need through these books, and maybe not everything in a book but something will pop out at you that's going to give you that fire to say you know what it's time for me to do it and you know that's what I'm really um hoping that building a leadership mindset does to uh the world that it sparks that I gotta go get it now I gotta do it now there's no time to waste no excuses to make anymore so um Personal Um, development is definitely something that you have to uh, invest in in order to get the success that you're looking for. 
I love that. I love that. And I agree with you. If there is one library that we will have to see more of, it is the one from Jose Escobar. I mean, he reads and, you know, he's got so many books and novels and all the genres in his library. I know he reads a March mammoth uh, between, and, and in March he reads a book that is 500 to 1,000 pages thick. Yeah. So that is amazing and it inspires me to read more. And he's also said in the interview that we had that he reads different books also at the same time. So that's amazing. That's amazing. I agree personal and professional development is so important. From my personal um, leadership uh, journey, what I've always done is I, I do – uh, because I'm a pastor and I'm a lot about looking at oneself and developing, you know, in a holistic manner, I've applied that in my, my leadership role as well. So when I go for personal professional development webinars, you know, uh, audios that I listen to, people that send me notes, I go and I journal it. So I can always say that I've got a I've got a leadership journal already in a sense where I write down this is what resonated with me, this is what I'm going to do about it, and then later I'll go back and I'll see, ooh, I never thought of that, you know, I didn't do it. Let me apply it now. So personal and professional development, absolutely, it is so important. Thank you for that. You encourage us to do more. And you mentioned something. You said that you spend money on these activities because you are investing in yourself because you know that your development is important not only for yourself but for others. And I, I'm so happy that you put it out there. We have to invest in ourselves as leaders and we will always keep learning as we've established. So thank you very much. Absolutely. <laughs> Nikki, who is your role model? If you had to pick a role model and share that with us. Oh, wow. Um, my mom is my role model because she wow. worked so hard to, um, to get us to where we are today, not having the education that we were um, yeah. able to get, but her uh, desire to always see me succeed and um, always wanting me to, you know, just motivating me every time I told her about what my dreams were. She never mm -hmm. shot the idea down that they were crazy. She just said, just go for wow. it. Keep going. I have your back. And uh, she's really my mo role model because, again, we have to break these generational curses that yes. we all have choices. We all come from different yep. backgrounds. Some yes. may have it worse than others, unfortunately. But there have been people that, you know, had had traumas and things that happened in their life, but they were still able to overpower. So I don't want to downplay uh, mental health or anything like that. But we do have choices. We can't really uh, break down when, you know, when things happen. And I just want to actually, uh, I just I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm back. I just want to actually say that my son, he's actually was diagnosed with autism at a very young age. Yeah. I apologize for that. <laughs> that he was uh, diagnosed with autism at a very young age and he did not know that he had it. And it was on the very low spectrum where it's more social. Um, yes. disconnected, uh, everything else, you know, he, he's good at, um, he's yeah. able to communicate all that good stuff. However, I never told him that he had it. Now we had meetings wow. every year at school yeah. with IEPs to make sure that, you know, his learning was continuing to grow and things like that. So he never had an issue throughout the whole year. And I made it a point not to tell him because I never wanted him to use wow. that as a crutch or an yes. excuse for him not to be successful. And wow. which definitely proved my point that he found out at age 16 uh, before the end of this school year that, you know, he was diagnosed with that. And um, he asked me, why did I? never told him and I told him my reason behind that and he understood uh, but yeah. it's no different had I told him when he was at a younger age he probably yes. would have used that as a crutch and an excuse yes. not to 
take those books and read them. And so he would always blame it because I know people that blame it on their conditions. Unfortunately, again, I'm not downplaying anything, but I just want people to understand that we can be diagnosed with whatever, but we still Mm -hmm. have to live and we still have to survive and we still have to make it happen regardless of what our challenges are, because it just makes it so much more special. So, um, so yeah. You know, withholding that information from your son was the best thing you could have ever done for him. And I'm so happy that your mom is your role model because I can see she shaped you into a fantastic mother. And you are a fantastic daughter and you are shaping your son into a fantastic son. And one day he's going to be a fantastic father. So wonderful, wonderful work on your part. Because you didn't limit his beliefs about himself when, you know, by not telling him. You actually helped him to live a normal life. The first thing that happens when people are diagnosed with some other form of medical condition or it's the only thing. And unfortunately, that is in our human nature. It's the only thing that they think about and that they measure themselves against. And not telling him about that until he was old enough to understand the concept helped him to live a life like any other child that doesn't have autism, for instance. So wonderful. That was an amazing thing that you did for him. Wonderful. Would you share with us your view on the importance of having female leaders in society? Oh, my God. Yes, we definitely run the world. (laughs) We need to continue to run the world. (laughs) And it's so inspiring because sometimes we um, we see the unfairness in corporate America. You know, that's a big topic. We're not equally uh, compensated for some of the things that, um, you know, we put out there. But again, we just have to continue to fight, continue to raise our voice, continue to. instill life in others that you know have gave given up hope um motivate others be the voice for those that you know can't really share um in some way shape or form so it's very important for women to continue their growth in leadership and you know take it by the horns and just Mm -hmm. hold it close to your heart and just inspire others were naturally nurtured anyway just by you know our biology so um (laughs) so yeah so i just say that women um we have a very special gift when it comes to being able to project the our hearts to say Mm -hmm. hey you know there's just more to life and you know let's lead by example let me carry this with you uh instead of just putting it on your shoulder and then you figuring it out so um that's the type of leader i am i you know i'm gonna we're gonna be attached at the hip throughout this whole journey um until we you know receive a success and we celebrate it and then we do it all over again that's just (laughs) it (laughs) yes absolutely we do run the world i agree with you (laughs) we go the extra mile for those we lead so if you are a female and you are in the audience you're a leader don't hold back lead Be you, do you, because the world needs you. The world needs these female leaders to stand up and say, well, here I am, world, and this is what I can bring to the table. Fantastic. So how important is me time for a leader? Oh, me time is so important that you need to actually put it in your schedule, in your book, block out. Some time for meditation routines are everything when it comes to being in a business of um, leading and you know just giving your all it can overtake you where you know there's so many great things happening but again yeah. I go back to what I said uh, very earlier in this interview that you can't give a hundred percent if you're not a hundred percent. So there is time that you have to take to decompress, reset, do your, um, you know, quarterly, uh, 
intakes of what's going on in your uh, life, what you can change. And that also includes the me time in that time as well. So definitely taking a day of Sabbath, if you believe in that, just taking a day for you. There's seven days in a week. Um, yes. Even if you can't take a full day, take blocks of hours just to kind of pour into you uh, in um, any way, shape or form. If that's, you know, worship music, if that's um, a podcast, you know, just motivation always say garbage in is garbage out you oh, definitely yes. want to make sure you put good in so that Thanks. you can give good out and that's what happens during your me time when you don't have the voices in your head when you don't have the people calling you or when you're not on zoom all day long it's definitely important to take care holistically of yourself your mind body and soul just kind of decompress and it's so important because then you can reset and you can go at it at a thousand percent uh, the yeah. next day. So that's super awesome. I agree with you. I agree with you. I have a set time and day in the week where I go and, and you know, I'm from South Africa. So we have beautiful mountains here where I hike up a mountain. I take my journal. I spend the morning there or sometimes the afternoon, depending on the weather. I sit and I journal, I pray, I even take a nap in the sun on a big old rock and I just spend time with God and nature. And let me tell you, when I go down that mountain, I feel like a new person. I feel ready for my week and there's just nothing that beats my me time. It's just amazing. So we should definitely incorporate that into our routines because otherwise we kind of lose um, momentum. We get tired, we get stressed, we get burned out. So me time, I agree with you. Very, very important. Very important. So in your opinion, do good leaders show up or do they grow up? I put that in because it's a tricky question. It um, is a tricky question. And I looked at that question and I'm yeah. like, how am I going to answer this? <laughs> but I, I would really have to say that it's both. You grow yeah. up throughout your progress, throughout your journey. Um, you're definitely going to learn way beyond what you expected. That's what the growth process is. It's a growth mindset. You're never stopping anything. But then you show up because you're there. You're there for your people. You're there for your community. You're there for yourself for your wife, for, you know, your family and you show up and you grow up. So it's both, it's definitely both. I mean, and it's, it's been a journey. Um, I've always had a leadership mindset throughout my years. I've always had things that kind of just challenged me and, you know, in my early years, like, you know, is, is it really worth going through it? Is it worth yeah. the struggle? Is it worth, you know, the headaches that come with being mm -hmm. a business owner or entrepreneur or even a manager or yeah. whatever it is, um, being a mom, you know, a yeah. brother, a sister, anything like that. It's always going to be a challenge because not always, not everyone is going to really see your perspective, but um, when yeah. you hold that near and dear to you, um, it, it's going to show, it's going to yeah. show. So I believe that, you know, it's just a learning process, a growth mm -hmm. process and just show up, be there um, yeah. 110%. Beautiful, beautiful. It is something that I added in my journal a while ago. I asked myself that question because I like to ask myself questions. And then I like to look into the answers and then I answer myself in my journal. And I, my answer to myself was leaders grow up they invest in themselves and then they show up as the best leader that they can be. So I love your answer. Thank you very much. And I Thank agree you. with you 100%. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Nikki, what's next for you? What is the project that you're currently working on? What can we follow you on social media about? How can we support you? Awesome. Yes. So first and foremost, you can follow me on Nick. Um, my social medias are all my name. I do have multiple because of my three businesses. 
So you can find me on Nikki Cuesta, my regular personal page. That's really my travel page, my lifestyle page. Um, Then you can uh, do Nikki Cuesta Building a Leadership Mindset, which is based on the book and the course. Uh, What's next for me? Oh, my gosh. So um, Building a Leadership Mindset is more for the adult uh, entrepreneur right now. But me and my son, we actually uh, brainstormed throughout the summer. And we actually want to take this to the youth. So our next project probably launching in 2024, because it's going to take a little bit of time uh, to get things together and kind of just plan it out. You know, he's graduating in 2023. So he wants to be 100% involved in this project, which he created was building a leadership mindset for teens, which we are going to uh, look at targeting teen uh, young individuals from 10 to 18 go yeah. into schools wow. detention centers um yeah. any anywhere where the need is so yeah. that we can start preparing um students to be entrepreneurs by the time they're out of high school so they're wow. creating jobs businesses and things like that so we definitely yeah. want to instill that leadership mindset for the youth so that they're prepared so that's what's uh coming forthcoming obviously my course 13 week course connect with me on www.buildingaleadershipmindset.com that's where you can actually pre-order my book right now that launches in january you will get an autographed copy um with that and i'm super excited uh we do have some webinars coming up uh in september and october so look out for that after I come back from my Mexico trip. I'm celebrating my 20 year anniversary Yay! in Mexico. So I'll be there for Whoa. eight days, seven nights. I'm super excited uh, yes. about that. And also my lifestyle club is attached to any business that I have, because if yes. we're building businesses and we're creating uh, businesses and leaders and things like that, you're going to have to travel, you're going to have to save. So there is a special uh, lifestyle membership in any of my organizations so that you'll be equipped with everything that you need to run your successful business and wow. uh, change that mindset as well. So yeah, that's what I have going on. That is amazing. You are a true entrepreneur. You are always busy with something. And I love the fact that you booked a special trip to Mexico to celebrate your 20-year anniversary. Well done on that. Go and enjoy it thoroughly. Eight days, seven nights. It's going to be amazing. And uh, to the audience, please follow Nikki on all these social media platforms. You know, go to the membership develop as a leader and what I love about the fact that you work with the young the youth is I work with them in the church and I realize how they need leadership instruction now more than ever and normally we would say a teen is from 13 to 18 but you hit the nail right on the head because the age of 10 is the most important age to catch them in that frame of mind where they are starting to think about life, what do they want to do, the the, almost, I'll say, pre-teen moments before they go into the full teenage years. So I love the fact that you go from 10 to 18, and I'm very happy to say that it's my opinion that you are building leaders for tomorrow through your program. Thank you. (laughs) <laughs> wonderful and my final question and our time together has just you know flown by so quickly yes. but my final question is do you have any words of wisdom for the audience yes um i i there's so many things that i can say and so many things that we've already touched on but the words of wisdom that i can actually share with you right now is get out of that thought process of you not being worth starting a business worth being an advocate for someone being a mentor, a coach, uh, whatever it is that you want to create your gifts and your talents, they're given to you for a reason. Don't pass it up. That's just like, 
not having water or oxygen to breathe. There's a reason why these things are being given to you. Don't ignore them. Definitely take action on whatever it is. Yes. If you don't do it, you already know the answer is no and that it's not going to work. But if you try and what if you never want to be in that what if type of mindset, yeah, because yeah. that will drive you crazy. I could have, should have, would have drives people crazy, insane. Yes. And you never want to be in that position. You have to make choices as yeah. soon as the opportunity comes up there's a reason why a friend asks you hey i seen something that i think you might like i seen mm -hmm. something that i think you will excel in they're not telling you that because they want a deal or a business they're telling you that because they truly see it yeah. in you well at least i know that i see the potential in others that if i bring up a uh, opportunity or something that's going on that I know that I would invest in and I feel that you would invest in just know it's for a reason not for anything mm -hmm. else not for the dollar sign let's succeed together there's no again you touched on it earlier yeah it's not a competition leaders should not compete leaders have different styles of giving uh, their message of delivering their message and that's why you have multiple. I have multiple mentors in my life right now, and I gain value from each and every one of them. And that's what you need to bring into your world today, yeah. not tomorrow, not next week, not next year. There's never a perfect time to get yeah. started on anything. You have to just start. So that's Absolutely. what I want to do with you guys today. Wonderful, wonderful <laughs> words of wisdom. It was so phenomenal having you on our session. We enjoyed yes. learning from you and getting to know you better. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure. Love to connect with your community as well. And I know you're doing just amazing things on your end and can't wait to meet you soon. Hopefully yeah. I can take a trip out there or you can come to the States and we can connect in person and have lunch <laughs> wonderful thank you nikki absolutely can't wait to meet you we'll figure something out and i know we'll have more interesting conversations when we are together so definitely looking forward to that <laughs> awesome thank, thank you so you. much Thank you. And to the Meticulous Moments audience, thank you so much for joining us. We are going to make Nikki's contact details available after the session. Reach out to her network with her, follow her on social media, and let's cheer her on as she creates leaders for the future. Good night. Bye.